Hey, Kirk here with Secret Nature. This week I had the opportunity to go back to work after hours uh, when I was off the clock and take part in some bird banding. I got some awesome footage of some amazing small little sawwet owls and I want to share that with you. So this is where the banding process starts. Michelle has a uh, bird in this bag. It's been brought to her by some of her assistants who caught these birds up in the forest by playing a lure call that attracts the owls in and they get caught in what's called a mist net, which is a very fine net. It's very safe to use with the birds, but it catches them and we can then place them into these bags and bring them back to the banding station. And here comes the owl out of the bag and when everyone sees them at this point, they realize that these are some of the cutest owls in the entire world. This is the saw wet owl and it's almost one of the smallest owls in the world as well. It's not quite as small as the elf owl, but it is quite small. And uh, saw wet owls are something we're trying to study and learn more about. So one of the things Michelle is doing is measuring the wing of this bird. They get a little bit of a sort of doctor's visit where we learn more uh, about them and kind of give them a little checkup and see how they're doing. So we're measuring the size of this bird's wing to find out more about it. Uh, with some other things we're going to measure like the tail and uh, the weight. The, ba the bag is weighed uh, when the bird is in it to see how much it uh, weighs and then we can weigh it later on without the bird in there and do a little math and figure out exactly how much the bird weighs. Depending on how much the bird weighs, it's going to determine what size band we put on it. Now the band is a pretty important part of this whole process because we want to know uh, if someone was to capture this bird again, where is it migrating to? Now we'll get to that band in a moment. I want to point out something here that's going on as well. Michelle is blowing on the bird uh, just under its wing here. We're trying to look and see if there's any fat on this bird. Migration is a tough time for these birds and we want to make sure they have some fat stored up and you can actually see it under their skin. And this bird did have a reserve of fat uh, so it's probably gonna maybe just stay in Minnesota for a day here and uh, catch a few mice and then head on back down south. You can see the size of these wings. Uh, it's an impressive sized wing compared to the size of the bird. But we're getting to the time here when it's time to put the band on the bird. So as I was saying earlier, we want to be able to identify this bird in the future and know if it is the same bird anyone else has caught before. They all do really look the same, but by putting a unique identifying number on this bird, it makes it an individual so that when we find it in the future, we can know, hey, this is that same bird that we caught uh, on this uh, date in the past, and also be able to tell how old it is. Now, there's two different size bands, either a 3A or a 4, so Michelle is looking at the uh, size of the leg to determine what is the correct size to put on. The band itself is made out of aluminum. It's very small, very lightweight, and it has a unique number on it. Here we are reading the number to make sure we're putting the correct band on the correct bird. And it's being put onto a little peg on a pair of pliers here on the table. Now that little peg, when we open up the pliers, uh, will take, take that band from being an O shape to a letter C shape. And you'll be able to see that here in a moment. There we go, it opens up. And then she's gonna put it on the leg and then use those same pliers to clamp it down. Now ordinary pliers would not work. These are very special rounded pliers that are the same size as the band. So she can squeeze as hard as she wants here and it will not hurt the bird's leg in any way. All it's gonna do is make the band nice and round. She's checking the fit to make sure that it looks good. And this bird is going to be ready to go pretty soon, but now as you can see we've switched to red light mode. We're getting this bird ready to go back to the wild and we want to not be shining bright lights in its eyes because it needs to be able to see with its nocturnal night vision. Uh, and these lights are now going to go off and a black light is coming on to show you all something really cool. When you look at this bird's wing under a black light, the feathers phosphoresce in this bright pink kind of color and I'll get a better close up here in a second so you can see. But all of these feathers are the same amount of reflectivity here. They're all that kind of pinkish color and you can see here that tells us they all grew in at the same time which means this is a first year of this bird's life. Contrast it with this other bird. See those feathers in the middle are not kind of glowing like that. That means they are older feathers. So some birds which have the older feathers we know are birds that were hatched out in a previous year. Uh, they could be two, three, four years old. And the birds that have all the feathers of one color like that, those are fresher feathers and they grew in this year. So this is in fact a hatch year bird that is now banded and ready to go back to the wild. If we catch it in subsequent years with that band on, we will then know how old it is. So we can learn a lot of really valuable things from research like this, thanks to bird banders like Michelle.